Hi everyone, in this video, I wanna go over seven different math books for seven different subjects that you can actually study without actually knowing any calculus. Now, some of these subjects are more advanced than calculus, uh, but you actually don't need calculus in order to learn uh, these things. So in theory, you can actually learn a lot of advanced mathematics without even knowing calculus. So the first subject and the first book is Graph Theory by Ronald Gould. Now, this is a pretty good book. I haven't really seen a graph theory book that I absolutely love. Um, this is one that's written for beginners, but it's also really, really deep. It's got a lot of really good mathematics. So while this is an introductory book on graph theory, it is still kind of advanced. Um, the more math you have before jumping into this, the better. But that's not to say that you can't pick up this book and read it on your own and learn some interesting things. The book has uh, tons of exercises, which is good, and it has quite a few examples. And again, the readability is quite good. Um, the biggest downside of this book is that there are no solutions to the exercises. Again, the book is Graph Theory by Ronald Gould. It's a pretty good book and you can probably get it for less than $10. So if you want to learn a little bit of graph theory, uh, I do recommend picking it up. This second book isn't really a math subject, uh, but it is a book on proof writing. So it covers multiple math subjects and it will teach you how to write proofs. So having read a book like this, or at least portions of it, will prepare you for all types of math. Um, this is something typically that math majors do uh, before they take more advanced math classes, they study from a book such as this one. This is the book by Bond and Keen, and it's a really, really good book on writing proofs. This is the table of contents, so you see that this book actually does contain like lots of math subjects. So it starts off with statements, then it goes into sets, then it talks about functions, and then binary operations and relations. It then goes on to discuss the integers, then it talks about infinite sets and the real and complex numbers. And then it finishes with polynomials. And notice, answers and hints to selected exercises. So this is a really good book uh, for anyone who wants to go into higher uh, level math. And just so you see a brief look at the inside of this book, it does contain a lot of examples. So this is one that if you are interested in exploring more math out of all of these books, I would highly recommend this one more than the others because this is absolutely critical uh, in order to pursue higher math. It's really important to be able to write proofs and this book will help you on that quest. This next book is a classic on set theory. The book is Naive Set Theory written by the legendary Paul Helmels. So this is an entire book on set theory. This book uh, was written in the spirit of Felix Hostorf's book. Uh, so Felix Hostorf uh, wrote a book called Set Theory, and Paul's book, Paul Hamos, um, builds off of that. It's a more introductory book, and it's extremely well-written and much easier to read than more advanced books. Let's just briefly take a look at the table of contents, and I'll just talk while I go through it slowly. If you're looking for like a math book you can lay in bed and read, um, this is a good choice. Uh, the book is really well written. Obviously, for some parts you'll have to write stuff down, but it's a classic. This is one of the classics on set theory. This next book is a book on number theory. So number theory, as the name implies, is the theory of numbers. And this is the book written by Long. I believe this book is still in print and it is still used at schools today. You can see my copy is like super, super old. I got this book years ago. This is probably one of the first math books uh, I ever bought on the internet. These are the exercises in one of the preliminary sections. And you see those circled pencil marks. Those are definitely me. That was past me trying to learn more advanced math on my own. I had this book uh, shortly after taking calculus, I believe, when I became a math major. I picked up this book and I worked out lots of problems and apparently I worked out all of these. These are just introductory problems just that serve as a refresher. 
this is a really good number theory book. Um, it's great for beginners and probably one of the best, if not the best, in my opinion. It's got tons of exercises in the sections. It reads really, really, really well. And it has solutions to some of the exercises, including some of the proofs. So you can use this book to self-teach yourself number theory. Um, I did. I, I actually have never taken a course on number theory, never in my life did I take a course on number theory? And um, I used this book to learn the number theory that I needed for other subjects. Again, the book is Number Theory, and it's the long book written by Calvin Long. Another subject you can learn without any calculus is linear algebra. And the reason I picked this book is because it's really good for beginners. This is the Anton book on linear algebra. Let's take a brief look inside this book. The book starts with something that's probably familiar to you, uh, systems of linear equations and maybe even matrices are familiar. So it starts off in a familiar place, which is really nice when you're learning a new math subject to start with some familiarity. Then it goes on to determinants and then vectors, which again, you're probably familiar with if you're watching this video. Here's where it gets a little bit different from most people. Most people who have not studied linear algebra don't know about vector spaces. So this book goes into that and it does a really good job. I feel like if you pick up this book and you learn some math from this book and then you take a course on linear algebra, you will be super prepared because all of the material in this book is typically covered in a linear algebra course in college. So this book goes along really, really well with what you would study in college in linear algebra. The book actually reads really well for a linear algebra book, and again, that's why I decided to include this linear algebra book in the video instead of the many others I own. It's a really, really good book for beginners, and I think it's a really good introduction for someone who's trying to learn linear algebra. Also, it has tons of exercises, and at least my edition has almost all of the answers. Let me show you. These are the solutions to the exercises, and yes, they are in the back of the book. Now, not all of the exercises are included. He often doesn't include solutions to the proofs, but that's okay. Uh, he has most of the answers to all of the computational problems, which makes it extremely good for self-study. Again, the book is Linear Algebra, and it's written by Howard Anton. So if you're trying to learn something a little bit different from calculus, this is a really good entryway into linear algebra. Now, this next subject is a lot more advanced than all of the other subjects we've looked at. This is Abstract Algebra, and this is the Saracino book. This is, in my view, the absolute best beginner book for Abstract Algebra. Now, I'm super biased here because this is the book that I used, but I own tons of Abstract Algebra books, and I really think that this is the best one for beginners. Let's look inside this awesome book. This is the table of contents. So you see it starts off with binary operations, then it goes on to groups, and then fundamental theorems about groups, subgroups, direct products, functions, symmetric groups, then it keeps going. It talks about Silo theorems. It does a little bit with rings. It doesn't do as much with rings as other abstract algebra books. The only downside of this book, in my view, is that it doesn't contain enough math. I've actually read this entire book. I have read the whole thing and I have done most of the problems in this book and I found myself wanting more. Like I needed to know more for what I was doing at the time and so I had to use many, many other books. And it does have answers to some of the problems. This book reads really well. I have really fond memories of this book because I've spent so much time with it. I just love everything about this book, the way it feels in my hands. I mean, the colors. Uh, if you're looking to get into abstract algebra, I cannot recommend a book more uh, than, than this fabulous, fabulous book. This last book and this last subject, which you can study without calculus, is probability. This is the Ross book on probability. It's called A First Course in Probability. I bought this because someone uh, said it was a good book, so I picked it up and read a few sections and did some problems, and I thought it was excellent. This is a great book on probability, and it's an entire book on probability. 
I actually have some of Ross's other books on more advanced things, and those are also very, very good. Now, I should mention that there are some parts of this book that do require a calculus, uh, but for the most part, you can jump in and learn a ton of probability theory without knowing any calculus. Again, the book is A First Course in Probability by Sheldon Ross. So in theory, you can pick up these books and you can learn some math beyond calculus in a sense. Uh, graph theory is typically only studied by, you know, math majors and computer science majors. And again, this book, um, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like an amazing book, but it's a pretty good book. It's Graph Theory by Ronald Gould. The number three book we discussed was the one by Long. This one's actually, again, I think really good for beginners. Great book. If you're taking a course in number theory or you want to get started with number theory, I honestly think this might be the best one. It's the one by Long. The abstract math book by Bond and Keen is not really a math subject uh, per se, but it's something that's absolutely essential before going to higher math. So I recommend this one to anyone who wants to learn more math. The set theory book we looked at was the one by Holmos. Um, this one is a classic. This is one of the classics in mathematics. Uh, Paul Holmos died uh, years ago, and he was a great mathematician and a great teacher. So um, it's really, really a classic. Out of all the subjects we looked at, I really think this is the most advanced. And this one does require some proofwriting experience. But again, you can just jump into it and learn what you learn. Uh, the book is Abstract Algebra, a first course by Sarah Chino. This is the linear algebra book I recommend for people who don't know calculus or want to learn math beyond calculus. It's the one by Anton and again it's very beginner friendly and it has answers to almost all of the problems in the back of the book. And then there's the Ross book on probability. Uh, this is a really good book and the whole book is on probability. It's an entire book on probability. Uh, some sections do require a calculus uh, but it's a pretty solid uh, book. So that's it. I just wanted to make this video because uh, one of my subs left a comment and they said, hey, you should make a video t discussing some topics that people can learn um, without knowing calculus. I thought, okay, what, what can people learn without calculus? So I just picked up uh, seven books that I saw. Uh, I might have missed some subjects. I know there's a lot more math subjects you can learn uh, without calculus. If you have any other recommendations or any other subjects for people, uh, just leave a comment. Um, yeah, so I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who's trying to learn more math. That's it.